Okay, so we now have our roof uh, fully braced and um, we're getting ready to prepare our rafter tails for our fascia. Now, if you remember when we laid out our rafters, um, we went ahead and did that plumb cut on the end and this actually works really, really well if your wall is straight. Um, if, if you were able to sight down our um, plumb cuts right now, they look pretty straight. Um, but something that we really want to um, show you guys is how to cut these guys when they're already in place. Um, so let's say you're doing a remodel or um, you're just replacing a few rafters that are um, rotten within a roof. Um, it's a pretty good idea to just uh, leave these rafter tails long and then we can come back um, and um, basically take a string line from end to end and snap a line. That way you ensure that your fascia is straight. Um, sometimes when you're doing some remodels, your wall um, has shifted over the years and your wall's not straight. So there's not, um, not too many ways to fix that if it's all drywalled still uh, without tearing off all the drywall. Um, so you can actually hide that bow in the wall with your finish, um, with your finished fascia. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna Basically, instead of having a 12 inch overhang, um, for this example, we're gonna do an eight inch overhang. Um, so the way we do that, um, I like to use a rafter square and you can take your rafter square and have it flush against your wall and bring it to one of your rafters here. And if we're gonna have an eight inch overhang, um, we're gonna account for our fascia board, which again is gonna be two by material. Um, so that's an inch and a half thick. Um, so we're gonna do eight inches minus one and a half inches, which is um, six and a half. So we'll come and make a mark at six and a half. And now that's gonna represent the new plumb cut line that we're gonna do. And what we can do now is go ahead and make a plumb line. Um, you can do this two ways. Remember we have a 12-12 pitch. Um, so a simple way for this um, particular roof is just hold it and use our 45. But let's say you had a 412 or a 512. You can use that pivot again, read your um, common line here, and then make your plumb cut that way. Um, so we'll go ahead and mark this out. And then Azad has done the same thing on his side. and. Um, you don't want to measure this out on every one because again, um, the whole concept here is if your wall's crooked, we're trying to hide that um, crooked line. So what we'll do is we'll hold a chalk line. I'll give this end to a Zad. He'll hold on his end. And then I'm gonna hold on my end. All right. I'm gonna pull it nice and tight hold it at both of our marks and snap a line. All right, so now on each rafter, we have a chalk line um, that represents where we're going to make our new plumb cut. And since we know that this uh, string line was perfectly straight, we know that once we make these new plumb lines, our fascia board is gonna be perfectly straight. So now we'll take our speed squares and just run all these down real quick. And then we'll take a circular saw and go ahead and make these cuts. So I'll demonstrate one right here for you. You wanna make sure that your cords are out of the way. And then go ahead and make the cut. So now we have that plumb cut that's exactly six and a half inches away from our building. And when we put our two by uh, material on here for our fascia will be our exact eight inch overhang. So now, if you remember on our old um, rafter layout, we had taken that bottom notch off um, because our fascia is only two by six. 
Um, so we're gonna have a bottom little nub here that's gonna be sticking down past our fascia board. We wanna go ahead and take that off. Um, so I happen to know that uh, we used a um, two by eight and we put a 45 degree bevel on that. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that here in a minute. Um, but the back of that fascia board is seven inches and I want this to be a little bit higher. So I'm gonna go ahead and do six and a half, make a line here and then cut that little nub off um, with the circular saw. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and cut all of these rafters to length and then we'll be ready to install our fascia board. Okay, so we uh, got all of our rafter tails cut to length. We got these bottom nubs chopped off and we have our fascia board um, prepared here. So, um, like I said, our fascia board is uh, two inch material, or two by material. So it's an inch and a half thick. Once we put this guy up here, we have an eight inch overhang. So, um, a little bit about this fascia board here. Uh, we chose to use a two by eight. And um, the reason why we did that was because we have such a steep um, pitch to this roof. Um, we basically want it to look like we have a two by six fascia here. Um, but what's gonna happen, um, if you can imagine, we're gonna put roof sheathing on the top of this roof here. And if we were to put our fascia board flush um, with this top line, our sheathing would come down and then it would do like a little ski slope at the end. And we really wanna try to avoid that. So what a lot of people do is they'll take a speed square here, run it down along that rafter, and then butt that two by six up right to um, where it, it connects with the sheathing. Um, that's more than um, fine if you have like a 412 or 512 pitch, but anything over like a 512 pitch, I like to put the bevel um, on the fascia board. And the reason why we do that, um, once we put our sheathing on top of here, um, one, we need to nail the edge of our sheathing and there's nothing here. Um, this, we got this little chunk that's missing here. Um, there's nothing to nail our sheathing to. Um, so over time, we'll kind of get a little bit of a wavy, wavy line there with the edge of our sheathing. Second, we have uh, a drip cap or a drip edge that's going on the front of our roof here. And if there's nothing here to nail that to, that can eventually start to fall off and it's just not good news. So. What we've done is we've gotten one size bigger than a two by six and we've put in the pitch of the roof on, on the top here. So if you measure the front, we got pretty close to five and a half inches, which is the width of a two by six. So once it's on here and once the drip, cap, or drip edge is on here, it's gonna look like a two by six. But now we have all this extra meat here to be able to uh, nail the edge of that roof sheathing and have a nailing surface for our drip edge. So what Azad has done, if you remember, these are just our common rafters. Um, we still have to put on our fly rafters or make an overhang um, for our um, gable ends yet. So what we're gonna do here, we've run our, um, our ridge beam a foot long, and we're also gonna run our fascia a foot long. That way we, connect, we can connect our fly rafters, which is pretty much the same thing as a common rafter again, just without the um, bird's mouth, we'll be able to connect it at the top and the bottom, and then we'll put some blocking in later. But we need to do a reference line, and on the back here, we have, can't quite see it, I'm in the way here. Let's bring it around. We measured in one foot from the end and made a reference mark, and we know that this is our first uh, location for our um, common rafter here. That gives us the proper overhang um, so we can still have some, um, some support to nail our fly rafter. Zod has a mark down there, and we'll go ahead and start to lift this up in place. Now before we lift this into place, um, it's uh, important again, um, just like when we were um, screwing down our mud sills and when we were screwing down our top plates, uh, we wanna go from one end to the other. We don't wanna nail this end, nail that end, 
and then have to try to maneuver this middle um, to be flush, uh, be perfectly flush, because it's going to be a lot harder. Uh, Azad can work on that end, moving that board up and down as I nail along this, and it's just going to go a lot easier using that leverage. So we'll go ahead and begin to put this in place. I'm going to grab a nail here. And then I'm going to sight over the back of our board and line up our one foot mark. And I don't have to be perfect quite yet, but I'm going to hold it and also get a nail started here. Maybe. All right. Okay, got that started. I'm gonna get lined up with our edge again. And I'm just gonna go so it just comes through. And I'm gonna double check that we're on our layout mark. And then I'm gonna double check that our top of our fascia board is right in line with the top, or the uh, top edge of our rafter here. All right, we look pretty good there. I'll drive it home. And then you can see if we take a rafter square here, uh, uh, speed square, and we sight down this, we have a perfectly smooth um, transition from rafter to fascia board. And we have all this nailing surface for our roof sheathing. So I got that tacked in place. I'm not gonna completely nail it off yet. But I'm going to go along here and go every board and we'll have Azad lift the board up and down into place um, and I'll tack these off. Alright, you want to go down just a little bit? And again, we know we've took a lot of time um, cutting all these rafters and we took a lot of time leveling our wall, getting it straight. Um, so we know that um, these reference points are pretty, pretty straight. So that's what we're going to use. We're not going to rely on the straightness of the board um, because uh, it's over a 16 foot length we could have, as you just saw, about a quarter to a half inch of um, bend to that board. Um, so we want to bring it into place. Um, using the rafters as a guide. Okay, these two look pretty decent, so I'm just going to leave those for right now. And we'll talk about how uh, we'd finish nailing this off. So with a 2x6 fascia, or 2x8 in this case with a bevel on it, uh, we're going to end up putting three nails in each rafter. And these first two nails, uh, you don't have to worry too much about missing um, the rafter. But this third nail, um, when we put that in, we actually want to uh, angle it going up. Because if you remember, our rafter is coming down just like this. So if we nail straight in, basically we're just nailing in that little tiny triangle of rafter. And um, you run the risk of breaking that off or just over time it um, cracking and it's just not a very strong um, connection. So if you go on the bottom and angle your nail up and your nail's actually going with the pitch of the roof, you'll get a lot more meat that way. Okay, so we'll go ahead and nail off the rest of our rafters here and then we'll be ready to install our fly rafters. Okay, with our uh, fascia board in place, we are now ready to uh, hang our fly rafters. Uh, so you can see now we have um, our ridge beam overhanging a foot. We have our fascia board uh, overhanging a foot. We're gonna keep our one foot overhang for our gable um, end wall here. Uh, so basically this is real simple. We're just gonna put this in place. Um, and again, our top of our rafter here is going to sit nice and flush with the top of our ridge beam here. And Azad's going to make the top of the rafter down there flush with the top of our fascia board. 
um, so we have that nice uh, continuous slope going there. Um, so we're gonna do three nails up here, three nails down there, and we'll get this in place. Just to reiterate here, it's really important. Um, this is basically gonna be our finished surface here. We have some aluminum fascia that's gonna go over this. Uh, but we really wanna take our time uh, to get our edges nice and flush here and get our edges nice and flush there because if we have any, uh, any gaps or uneven surfaces, that's gonna pick up in our aluminum fascia. So we wanna kinda treat this like it's finished work. So we'll go ahead and finish nailing this off. All right, so now our uh, fly rafter is in place. The only thing left to do now is uh, we're gonna put a couple pieces of blocking in here. So right now, this fly rafter can move back and forth. Um, so we wanna solidify that by um, putting a piece of two by six between the fly rafter and the wall. So we'll go ahead and take a measurement. And again, just like cutting any blocking that we do, we wanna take a measurement all the way at the top and take a measurement all the way at the bottom. Both locations we have exactly 10 inches. And again, the reason why we do that is if this uh, fly rafter is bowing at any point, we wanna take that bow out. Um, so if we cut our blocking all at the same length and nail it tight, we'll have a perfectly straight uh, fly rafter because we know that our wall is perfectly straight. So we'll go ahead and get those cut and these blocking go on uh, two foot centers just like our uh, rest of the roof framing. <laughs> 